The main event of a WWE pay-per-view is usually the longest or one of the longest matches on the card. That is of course because these matches usually have the biggest stars in them as well as the most storyline heft, but sometimes the final match of the night is actually one of the shortest. For this list, we are counting a main event as the match that was scheduled to go on last at a pay-per-view, so no Money in the Bank cash-ins and no previously unannounced matches. Sorry Hulk Hogan and Yokozuna at WrestleMania 9, but, well, actually, I'm not sorry. Not sorry at all. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are the 10 shortest WWE pay-per-view main events ever. Join us. Number 10, The Undertaker vs. The Undertaker at SummerSlam 1994, 8 minutes and 57 seconds. In an alternative, some would say better, universe, the 1994 edition of SummerSlam was closed out by Bret Hart battling his brother Owen for the WWE title inside a steel cage. This was the culmination of the incredibly personal feud between the two siblings that had begun back at Survivor Series the previous year. After 32 minutes of intense action inside the cage walls, Brett escaped the structure to win the match and keep his title reign intact. Unfortunately, we don't live in that universe. We live in a universe where this show was closed out by The Undertaker taking on a guy in Undertaker cosplay. As part of a storyline where Ted DiBiase had brought his own version of the dead man to WWE, the real Undertaker and the fake Undertaker, the Underfaker if you will, clashed in SummerSlam's final match. Well, I say clashed, what I mean is they slowly bumped into each other with all the grace and panache of two trees collapsing due to old age. Mercifully, this this dull affair only lasted 8 minutes and 57 seconds before the real taker put the imposter away and this whole miserable angle was dropped. Number 9. Kurt Angle vs Stone Cold Steve Austin vs The Rock vs Rikishi at Rebellion 2000, 8 minutes and 50 seconds. To give you an idea of how little WWE cared about British audiences in 2000, the longest match on Rebellion, a UK exclusive pay-per-view, lasted just over 12 minutes. In fact, the under Undertaker vs Chris Benoit was the only match on the show that went into double digits. Highlights from across the card included China teaming with Billy Gunn to take on Dean Malenko and Eddie Guerrero, Steve Blackman defending the hardcore title against Perry Saturn, and a sub three minute women's match pitting Ivory against Lita. What a time to be alive. The show's main event was a fatal four-way for the world title, which on paper looked like an absolute banger. Defending champion Kurt Angle was putting his belt on the line against Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock and Rikishi in a match that could have been great had it been given longer than 8 minutes and 50 seconds to play with. Instead, Angle hit the Olympic Slam on Rikishi to win a short, underwhelming affair, proving once and for all that the big man was only there to take the pin. Number 8. John Cena vs The Great Carly at Judgment Day 2007, 8 minutes and 15 seconds. They might have been crazy enough to give him the World Heavyweight Championship in 2007, but even WWE had enough sense not to book the guy in any main events as champion. Carly's one and only show closer came at Judgment Day 2007, where he was the challenger to John Cena's WWE Championship. Not only was Carly to joy what a match is to a can of petrol, but the shine was also beginning to come off Cena as a main eventer. Once again though, WWE's very small amount of common sense prevailed, and the bout was booked to last no longer than 8 minutes and 15 seconds. It might have gone longer had Carly been facing somebody else, but Cena was still relatively new as a top talent and was far from the ring general needed to carry such a dead weight. In the end, the champ retained by forcing his gigantic opponent to submit for the first time ever. Oh, but what's this? His foot was under the rope? Oh no, don't tell me that means another world title match between these two. To be fair, their Falls Count Anywhere match at one night stand was actually pretty decent. Number 7. Stone Cold Steve Austin vs Mr McMahon at St Valentine's Day Massacre 1999, 7 minutes and 52 seconds. Anyone who's seen St Valentine's Valentine's Day Massacre, a pay-per-view named after an actual massacre where seven people died lest we forget, might remember the main event lasting a lot longer than 7 minutes and 52 seconds. That's because there was an ungodly amount of brouhaha before the match between Stone Cold Steve Austin and Vince McMahon officially got underway. 
In their first and only singles meeting on pay-per-view, McMahon was putting his Royal Rumble victory on the line against the Texas Rattlesnake in a cage match, meaning that if Stone Cold won, he would be facing The Rock at WrestleMania. Finney Mac refused to enter the cage, causing Austin to run out and batter his boss all over ringside. He could have actually won the bout by forfeit as he had sent Vince crashing off the side of the cage wall through the announce table in one of the maddest bumps in WWE history. I mean, the guy was 53 at the time. Once the match did officially get underway, it only lasted a shade under eight minutes before McMahon's plan to use the debuting Paul White to his advantage backfired massively, handing Austin the win. Number six, Brock Lesnar versus Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania 36, night two, six minutes and 55 seconds. Whilst Hulk Hogan's impromptu victory over Yokozuna at number nine might officially be the shortest main event match in WrestleMania history, the briefest scheduled main event happened at the one mania we would all like to forget. WrestleMania 36 was the first WWE pay-per-view to be affected by the COVID pandemic, meaning that no fans were allowed in attendance for the showcase of the Immortals. In true showbiz fashion, though, the show went ahead anyway over two nights, and the second chunk was closed out by Brock Lesnar defending the WWE Championship against Royal Rumble winner Drew McIntyre. In a moment, over a decade in the making, McIntyre overcame the Beast's offense to strike him down with a claymore and capture his first WWE World Championship. Unfortunately, not only did his big moment take place in front of nobody, but it was all over and done with in 6 minutes and 55 seconds. Perhaps this match would have gone longer had Mania 36 gone ahead as originally planned, although this was a Brock Lesnar match, and as you're about to find out, Lesnar does not get paid by the hour. Number 5. Brock Lesnar vs Samoa Joe at Great Balls of Fire, 6 minutes and 25 seconds. Goodness gracious, it's that Raw exclusive pay-per-view from July 2017. What was it called again? Oh yeah, Shake, Rowl and Roll, that's the one. For this bizarrely named one-off event, WWE presented a tantalizing first-time ever encounter between two of the most unique performers they had on their books. Samoa Joe had outlasted four other men at the previous month's Extreme Rules to book a date with Universal Champion Brock Lesnar at the Rock Around the Clock pay-per-view. The match had a killer build, with Joe made to look like a total monster by choking out Brock until he was redder than his own bloody title belt. So, fans were expecting big things from this tasty big boy clash. Whilst the action was fast-paced and thrilling, the match itself only lasted a measly 6 minutes and 25 seconds before Lesnar retained. I mean, length isn't everything, just ask your mum, but it would have been nice to see a little bit more from these two titans, you know? Ah oh, well, at least this historic moment will make sure we always remember the name of the Johnny B. Good pay-per-view. That's right, isn't it? Number 4. Brock Lesnar vs Roman Reigns at SummerSlam 2018, 6 minutes 10 seconds. That same Lesnar Universal title reign that included the Joe match came to an end over a year later when the Broctopus finally dropped the gold to the man he probably should have lost to at WrestleMania, Roman Reigns. Before these two could throw down at SummerSlam 2018, Mr. Money in the Bank Braun Strowman came down to ringside and made it clear that he was planning on cashing in on the winner. Lesnar showed Braun what he thought of that notion by absolutely murdering him and then throwing his briefcase so hard that it <laughs> broke one of the LED screens. Strowman's presence eventually offered enough of a distraction for Reigns to take command of the match, crushing the champion's ribs with a spear to pin him and end his colossal 504 day reign. And they never wrestled again. Never, ever again. This match was essentially the perfect storm for a short main event. It was a Brock Lesnar title defense, and it had the element of outside interference. It culminated in a match that lasted just 6 minutes and 10 seconds, the shortest scheduled SummerSlam main event in history. Number 3. The Fiend vs Goldberg at Super Showdown 2020, 3 minutes 8 seconds. If there is one person who dislikes long main events more than Brock Lesnar, it is Bill Goldberg. Whilst the mayor of Suplex City can go long if he needs to, Goldberg was not built for matches lasting longer than 5 minutes, especially after his comeback in 2016. Case in point, this disastrous main event from the Saudi Arabia hosted Super Showdown in 2020. Goldberg had been chosen as the challenger for the Fiend Bray Wyatt's Universal Championship, presumably as a stopgap ahead of WrestleMania 36, right? Oh, how wrong we were. 
In a stunning turn of events, the 53-year-old ex-WCW guy plowed through the undefeated Fiend in just 3 minutes and 8 seconds to snatch the title from his gloved hands, and also kill any sense of mystique the once promising character had left. Worst of all, this was all done to set up a match between Goldberg and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, a match which never actually ended up happening due to the pandemic. The end result of this match was always going to upset people, but the fact that it happened in less time than it takes to make a cup of tea was the last straw. Number 2. Goldberg vs Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series 2016, 1 minute 26 seconds. 12 years after their classic match at WrestleMania 20, classics can be bad too, you know, Goldberg and Brock Lesnar were pitted against each other once again in the main event of Survivor Series 2016. Whilst Lesnar had returned to the company in 2012, this was the first time his opponent would compete in a WWE match since that fateful day in Madison Square Garden. The prevailing theory was that the two men would have a spirited big man clash, only for the Beast to vanquish his old enemy and continue his momentum as the the company's resident destroyer. That theory turned out to be a whole heap of wrong. Lesnar rushed Goldberg into the corner, only for Big Billy to shove him down. A cocky Brock got back to his feet, then got speared out of his Jimmy John's branded shorts. Another spear and a jackhammer later, and that was that. Goldberg had just come out of retirement and essentially buried the man who broke the streak in 86 seconds. This was madness. This was unheard of. This was brilliant, to be honest, and one of the most genuinely shocking things WWE had done in years. Number 1. Kevin Owens vs Goldberg at Fastlane 2017 22 seconds About three months after he bulldozed his way through Brock Lesnar, Bill was back in the main event to challenge Universal Champion Kevin Owens for his big red strap. Both men were in the middle of separate feuds heading into WrestleMania 33. Goldberg had a rematch with Brock to worry about, whilst KO had just broken up with his best friend Chris Jericho in an all-time great Raw segment. So would any of this play into the action itself? I'm on the edge of my seat here. It was Owens whose past got the better of him as Y2J walked out just before the match to distract his former partner in crime. This gave Goldberg the upper hand and he wasted zero time in putting the champ away with his trademark combination. Bill Goldberg was the new Universal Champion, and he'd done it in just 22 seconds. That makes the final match from Fastlane 2017 the shortest scheduled WWE pay-per-view main event of all time. Is that a record to be particularly proud of? Well, maybe if you're the guy who won the match. As for the loser, it's probably something he would like us all to forget ever happened. Spoiler, we never will.